an Esprit Fidel and a Fort um, I just want to talk about some traits of Romans. Some Romans who became emperors and uh, all of a sudden they betrayed the empire. I mean, the, the entire, they betrayed the idea of uh, Mare Nostro, of, um, of our city. Empire stretching from the uh, from the uh, from um, to Porta up to the Euphrates and the uh, Tigris rivers, Mesopotamia. So one of these traitors, the first of the traitors, was of course Tiberius, Nero. Um, well, sadly, um, Prince Germanicus he defeated the Cheruski. Um, the Hatti, the Bukteri, and other tribes. He defeated Homer, and he was about to turn. He was about to um, get the territory that was lost during the um, the Varus disaster, in the Tiberian Forest. And all of a sudden, Tiberius gave the order: retreat. Yes, but yes, but you're winning. Prince Germanicus is winning the war. He has secret orders to. Uh, not actually official orders to retreat to the Rhine. Um, so that was the first betrayal. So, in other words, the Cheruski, the Hatti, the Bogdari, and other tribes uh, got scot free for what they did to his violence. Why? Because Tiberius envied Prince Germanicus. So that's the first traitor. Now, the second traitor. Is of course uh, Nero, who betrayed his friends, all of his friends. I mean, uh, when he when he killed Gurbulo, uh, Domitius Gurbulo, who was the only person who could defeat the Persians, actually, after the East, that was betrayal. And uh, going on, we see uh, we see Domitian killing his friends, betraying and killing his friends. Right, and then we go on to the big traitor called Hadrian. Right, Hadrian may have been a um, sort of intellectual, emperor, but he betrayed his friends. He betrayed the empire. See, so see, Trajan, he captured all of uh, Armenia, and all of uh, Mesopotamia, and all of uh, Syria. He defeated the Persians and their allies, and the Arabs, and, um, and the Dacians. And what did Hadrian do? As soon as he got into power, Hadrian gave up Mesopotamia and Assyria and he gave it to the Persians for absolutely no reason at all. And he even considered giving up Dacia. So that's the big traitor, Hadrian. And then we go on to uh, Commodus. Commodus again killed many of his friends for no reason. And he gave up. Uh, his father had to view the Marcomani and the Quadi tribes. It's in Austria. That's in the, in the uh, Monte Czech Republic. He defeated them. And what does uh, Commodus do? He gives up the province. So his father died there. He spent three years subduing the Marcomani and the Quadi and the Scythians and other tribes. And he gave it all up. Why? And then, of course, we go on to um, we go on to Philip the Arab. So Philip the Arab actually kills Gordianus, Gordianus the Third, who was a uh, son of a senator. He was a real Roman aristocrat. He defeated the Persians, and all of a sudden, um, Philip the Arab gives up Armenia and Mesopotamia to the Persians. Betrayal. And then, uh, a few a few years later on, we see uh, Aurelian. Aurelian is victorious in all fronts, and then he gives up Dacia. And then we go on to um, to Julian. Now Julian was winning the war in Persia in 363 AD. And then all of a sudden he retreats. He burns his cargo ships 
and he's defeated for no reason at all. And then when he dies, your Venus uh, becomes emperor. And he pays an indemnity and he gives up land to the Persians again. So he's a traitor. Your Venus is a traitor. Julian acted very foolishly. And, um, and then, of course, we go on to uh, Honorius, who betrayed his friends, and he lost the he lost half of the empire for no reason at all. He was so weak and so stupid, Honorius, he betrayed the empire. Uh, well, and that's about it. Uh, and then we go on to uh, the Eastern Roman empires, and then we go traitors there, the useless emperors who betrayed their friends, again. But most of the, but it all starts with the Tiberius, with Tiberius envying Prince Germanicus, and letting Herman and the Cherusci and the Hatti and the Uderi and other tribes getting scot free, Hadrian betraying the empire, Commodus betraying the empire, uh, Philip the Arab, um, Aurelianus giving up land, um, even of the artists. He, was, he was one of the greatest emperors Rome ever had. Uh, give me a black for no reason at all. Uh, so something being defeated. Something being defeated, like for example, uh, Valent, Prince Valent, uh, Emperor Valens was defeated in Hadrianople by the um, by the Germans, the Scythians, and the uh, Goths by the coalition. You know? They didn't give up land. He was defeated in the battle and he died in a little hut outside of Hadrianople. But he didn't give up land. Uh, and for Augustus was defeated. I mean, Varus was defeated in the Teleburg forest, but didn't give up land. He was building up his forces to get the land back. And then, and all of a sudden, Tiberius gives the order, Prince Germanicus, and um, uh, Elias Gagina and all, and all the other commanders return back to the Rhine. Why? Because I'm jealous of Prince Germanicus. I mean, I mean talk about corruption, talk about. Um, and Jovinus, I mean, Jovinus, when he gave up land to, the, land to Persia, he died on the way back. I mean, he hardly did anything, he just died. He just gave up land to the Persians and he died. That's what your Venus did. And no one knows why Julian lost the war when he was winning the war. And no one knows why your Venus was elected and your Venus betrayed the empire. So, so, for no reason, Julian was winning, then suddenly he dies, he loses the war, and an idiot is elected who betrays the empire. And no one knows why Honorius lost parts of the empire to Alaric when he could have wiped out Alaric in a second. So Honorius was a traitor, he was an idiot, the son of Theodosius. Now Theodosius was a great emperor, his son was an idiot, Honorius was an idiot. Uh, I mean losing the war to a nobody, to Alaric. Alaric could have been wiped out in a couple of days. Stilicho could have done the job. So, Maybe Stilicho didn't trust him. Honorius didn't trust Stilicho, Flavius Stilicho. And even uh, Valentinian III betrayed and killed his friend uh, Flavius Aetius at the end. And all would have been lost. And uh, all would have been lost if it wasn't, if it wasn't for Pope Leo. Anyway, so you see, we got a lot of traitors. Philip the Arab killing the aristocrat uh, Gordon. Called the Arnis, the third. And doing what? Give up land to uh, Persia and then do nothing for six years and he, he's killed by a bunch of soldiers. He's affected Praetorian Guards. I mean, uh, I mean um, so we see jealousy, victory. We see um, traitors. So the idea of uh, Mare Nostro as being betrayed within. When you have traitors like Tiberius Nero and traitors like Commodus, 
what do you need the Germans for? The Goths and the Persians and the Parthians and the, um, the Arab allies of Persia, uh, the Scythians and the Huns, and the Burderi and the Hatti and the Cheruski and the Marcomani and the Quali. I mean, what do you need them for when you have traitors like, um, like Domitian killing, uh, killing Kubulo or Nero killing the Erdogan? Corbulo, Corbulo, Dominus Corbulo, for no reason at all, being envious of Corbulo. Uh, we have useless emperors like Servius Galba, or Servius Otho, or Lucius Vitelli, Vitellius, being useless emperors. They're completely useless emperors. And, um, let's not talk about the later uh, Eastern Roman Empire. We'll do that. We see the Roman Empire at its greatest extent during the reign of Emperor Trajan. And after his death, Hadrian betrayed it. He gave um, Assyria and Mesopotamia to the Persians. The Emperor Trajan, who gave Rome its greatest extent, capturing uh, Armenia, Syria, Mesopotamia, Nabatea, and Dacia. And it was betrayed by Hadrian. Emperor Hadrian gave up uh, Mesopotamia and Assyria to the Parthians soon after he, after he took power and he was, was considering giving up Dacia as well. Um, and apart from that, he had stupid beard. He had a stupid beard, like a barbarian. <laughs>